Welcome to a chunt review of another crab's chunt. This game uh, was a game we played on Steamos. Go check out Steamos. Uh, link in the playlist. Or link in the playlist. Link in the description. And see uh, how we found this game on our um, main series that we play on this channel. And the demo was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with the demo. It was two portions of the game, two sections of the game. Uh, and it left me wanting more uh, to the point where I was like, yes, we're going to do uh, a Steamos Returnos for this, uh, where I will come back and play this game when it is released. And that's what we did. Game came out, played it. Um, let's start with the graphices. The graphices are great. Um, I think that it sticks to its stylized theme. It's very cartoony, but, and it, it's not like super, like crazy hyper realism or anything like that. You know, it, it, it sticks to what it said it's going, like it starts out as, and it sticks to that the entire time. Um, the locales are pretty great. Almost all of them are really good. I personally didn't like the sludge factory. I understand why it was there, but man, it was just a drag to get through. It was like a swamp in Dark Souls. Like, yes, I understand why there's swamps in Dark Souls because Miyazaki's a fucking freak and has to have 19 swamps in every Dark Souls game. Um, but it this, this one just was like, I think that's where I started really just dreading playing this game. And I made it so far through that I was like, I'm gonna beat it. I'm gonna beat this game. Uh, whatever I have to do to beat it, I'll beat it. But man, did it, um, uh, did that, that level drag me down. The veil was great. I really liked the, like, design of the veil. The opening area was really nice. Still, my favorite area was probably the, uh, dilapidated castle in the beginning. Um, when, when you, uh, you know, uh, when you, when you fight the first, uh, the duchesses. And you think that's gonna be, like, the whole point of the game, and it's not. Um, the city... New, New Carcinia is really cool. Um, I really like uh, the idea of like all the houses being whiskey bottles and like boxes and stuff like that. And then the like slums are like cardboard boxes. Um, the the theming of like trash and how the the uh, the sea creatures use the trash in this game is fantastic. Um, so it's like I got my dump truck ass uh, right now, and that's a great little thing. Um, you know, they, they don't know what humans use, like even, uh, by the way, this is a big spoiler uh, review, but um, they, they, they're hunt the whole point, you're like hunting for this treasure and then you find the treasure and it's fucking, it's human money. And the, they're like, this is trash, but then their trash is like treasure to us or to them. Um, so that's, that's funny. The humor is pretty good. I liked all of the uh, using aquatic words to basically like say curse words throughout was pretty funny it was good um i enjoyed that so the humor was good the voice acting was kind of sparse there wasn't a lot and i didn't really think that most of the voices really matched up the main character's voice was fine um but i didn't think that like really any of the other voices matched up with the characters like, they kind of felt like a little low effort. Um, like, you could have given them a little more personality. I'm not saying that my voices were better and that I'm a good voice actor by any means, but I'm saying that, like, the personality I was giving these characters kind of felt a little more on par with, like, what they should have been. It's so goofy and cartoony. Like, why not go full prospector for the prospector museum guy? Why not give the the bar owner lady, like, a, a soft, like, bar, bar owner voice um you know why not give firth the fucking huge asshole like an asshole like i'm a fucking i'm super uh, that, like that kind of voice like his voice did not match his character at all i i don't know what was going on there um uh kind of leaking into the characters um i liked most of the characters uh i think that the designs on them are great firth being just like a bigger version of us and blue uh the crab lady who owns the bar, Nima, being just kind of like, uh, she kind of looked like a normal NPC, but just a little bit different. Um, the prospector crab man being like, uh, he very unique looking. I really liked him. And then uh, the isopod boss dude, who's like the the bottom feeder, who is like the mob boss. And then the, he has his octopus henchman. Um, really cool character designs there. Really liked it. 
Um, so that's that's great. Um, leading into story. Um, the story of just like finding the treasure, you're trying to get your, your shell back the whole time. It's, it's, it's fine. Yeah, it's good. It's a serviceable story. Um, I don't think that that was like a negative of the game. And uh, I don't think it really even dragged at all. It kind of was just like, all right, I got to get the treasure, got to get all the maps, get all the maps. And then you're just kind of like, all right, now I've got all the maps. Uh, it's, it turns out it's not, it wasn't worth it. So now we're fighting the abyss, the abyssy, uh, fucking jellyfish or whatever. And then, of course, Firth is a huge piece of shit and, uh, you know, completely oblivious to all of his, his downfalls and whatnot. Um, so, leads him into temptation and he fucks everything up. So, you know, it, it was pretty, um, I, I think it was a very, like, I knew it was going to happen throughout the whole storyline. It's not like a, there were no twists and turns. It was pretty straightforward. Um, I think the biggest twist was that the Duchess wasn't a bigger deal. I thought the Duchess in the very beginning was going to be like a big boss and she kind of just was like, all right, that was the first like hour or two of the game. And, uh, yeah, uh, you're, there's way more and more, there's an actual story after this and stuff. Um, so story wise, it was fine. It was a perfectly serviceable story. Um, in terms, uh, let's move on to, uh, sound design and, uh, music. Um, Music was pretty good. Uh, I think that there were some really unique songs. The song in the dilapidated castle after you beat the Dutch, or when you go back to, to fight the Duchess after she's been corrupted, is a fucking awesome song. That song is great. Um, and it's it's really good to the point where, uh, give me one moment, I'm, I'll run over there and teleport to it and we can listen to it uh, while I do the rest of the thing. Because I, I do think that that is the best song in the game. Sound effects are very good. Uh, I think that the sound effects in this game um, are are very uh, they 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 have a lot of cartooniness to them, but they they do uh, they they sound really nice. Oh, this song is just so fucking good. Um, ah, yeah, it's, it's the song's great. Um, uh, okay, so sound design is fine. Uh, uh, so I think the music is really good. I think that's one of the best parts about this game is the music and the soundtrack is really good and the sound design for all of the uh, effects and the uh, attacks and the abilities and all that kind of stuff. I think it all fits really well into the theme and that sound design wise is up there with uh, the the graphic theme and choice. I think those two are the the highest points of this game. I think that the visuals are great and the sound design is great. I think those are the two best parts of this game, followed probably by like the story being like underneath them by a margin. And then uh, the rest of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about is probably gonna be all of the stuff that I didn't like and was very negative about. So in terms of mechanics and gameplay, I really didn't ever grasp it fully. I didn't really like it, and there was a lot of things that kind of just, like, bothered me constantly. Oops. Uh, shit. Um, the, uh, um, the, the fucking, uh, the parry mechanic in this game being a hold and then, un like, unhold to parry was really fucking weird, and I think I parried, a, like, I could count on two hands how many times I actually parried in this game. Um, which is fucking crazy, especially since I feel like that is one of the best mechanics in the game is to be able to parry. And the fact that you just basically don't get to ever is ridiculous. And I, I talked about it in a previous episode um, a little bit. The fact that like, it's a, like a reverse parry almost because most parries are you aren't holding a button down or pressing a button and you press the button right as you're about to uh, get hit. So if you parry correctly in most other games that are like this that have parries, when you press that button, you're holding that button. So if you do get hit and you fuck up on the parry and you don't actually parry, you still will block that damage, right? So like since you're holding the button down, if you parry and you hold, you will block that damage. And so like, there's not a huge repercussion to parrying. In this game though, when you parry, you have to be blocking already and then you're releasing your block. So if you don't get the parry, you're wide open and you get hit full force. So it's like, there is more of a negative to trying to parry than parrying. Um, because you will get hit. And if you get hit, then you gotta heal it. Or if you're gonna just waste heals or, you know, you're gonna take damage. 
So it just, it, it kind of fucking sucks. Um, so I think the parry system in this game is like, it's a step backwards in, in terms of uh, Souls likes with, with parrying. Um, okay, uh, other things, the heal is very Soulsy. It's very similar to a Souls game. Uh, nothing really comment there. The shell mechanic was really interesting. I thought it was really cool. And I used the same ability the entire game. Um, I just never could see a point where I thought that like any of the other abilities were very good. Um, the decoy was like what the game seemed like it wanted me to use the most because it was like the most expensive shell to buy and put insurance on and all that. And I just didn't think that it was that good. Like it just leaves your shell, your, your shell list and they're still like attacking. So if you get hit by them while they're attacking your, your decoy, like you're, you're kind of fucked because um, you have no shell on, and so then you take more damage. Um, also, look at the fucking defense on this. All of the rollout, uh, the, the shells with rollout, which was the, the ability that I used the entire time, um, all had massive defense on them. Like, that is a huge defense bar, and it's great. And I, I just don't see, like, a use for any of the other ones. Like, in the game, there was no other shells that, like, really even came close to this level of defense. Um... So yeah, I kind of like, I, I enjoyed the mechanic. I thought it was cool, uh, but man, did it like feel kind of pointless to have that many different abilities when there's really just a, like one that seemed to be, for me personally, the only choice, which was rollout. Like it, it provides you defense. You don't get hit when you're using it. It gets you across the map so you can hit from far away. Um, it hits hard. It does good shell def or shell damage so you can like stagger enemies easier. Um, and it basically like refunds itself. So it's it's just very good. Um, so moving on from the shells, uh, we, we can talk about the little uh, the little buddies, the uh, whatever they're called companions. Um, pretty negligible in terms of like their effect. I just don't feel like they were like super like game changing. The only one that like actually was like, oh hell yeah, get that on was the lamprey, which is uh, the little leech that gives you vampire basically. So you you uh, you vampire health off of um, things whenever um, whenever they uh, whenever you deal damage. So that's that's great. I mean that's pretty good. Uh, it did seem like there was a lot of different ones that you could do and you could mix around with. Um, I just didn't feel like their effects were like strong enough or like you know did enough to really warrant me to switch them around like once i got the the couple that i liked like the increased damage the uh umami recharge which is what your shell ability um and then the uh the lamprey for the vampire i just never really used them again um so they 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 were there they i'm sure you can like get some crazy like builds with them but like for the most part it just didn't seem like they were like a huge deal um, so not, not a big aspect of the game. Um, boss abilities, uh, which you can see over on the far right, there was like five or six of them. There's the pistol shrimp, the tentacle, the crab claw, uh, the lightning and the false shell. Um, barely used these, barely ever used them. They use the same, uh, they use the, the mana, the umami, uh, that your spell, your shell uses when you, um, when you want to use like uh, the the rollout ability that I'm like talking so highly about, so it's like you choose: do you want to use your shell ability or those? And I just didn't think that they were like really that good. On the last boss, I did like I did use the tentacle and then do the rollout, and it was using that extra attack to do some extra damage. So that actually probably was a fucking fantastic combo that I didn't know that was possible until like the end of the game. So I probably could have been doing that from the beginning of the game and been doing extra damage. Um, Cause I think it only takes like one or two um umami to use. Um, so pretty, pretty cool. Like uh, the, I like that they're in there. I just don't know, like I personally didn't use them that much. Once again, I really just kind of relied on doing rollout constantly cause it, it felt like the most consistent and easy ability to use. And it was the easiest spammable thing. And it also like left me the most defense so that I didn't like die as much. Um, and then uh, let's move on to uh, the talent tree. 
Um, the talent tree with the slug, the, the thing we were sitting on in the beginning of the review. He, uh, I did think that the talent tree was pretty cool. It did add some pretty game-changing mechanics that uh, could be used. And um, I think it was a nice talent tree. I liked how the way that you got it wasn't by using like souls or anything. Like it wasn't like the currency used to level up or anything like that. It was uh, the crystals. There were just like crystals scattered around and then enemies with glowy eyes would drop the crystals as well. And that's how you use, you use that to level up. Um, they gave you way too much and I was able to complete it like way before the the last the last like fight i also did a little farming in this game so that might have been like why i was i had the talent tree completed way before the end um but uh yeah i definitely think it was really cool i liked it i liked the three different branches that it had um and i think it was a pretty um pretty great little talent tree it's not like super complex but it did add some new mechanics that were um that i used um, like, I think one of them was when you take shell damage, uh, you can replenish that shell damage like Bloodborne um, by doing damage. And that was great. I think that was a, a really good little mechanic to add in and use it in the talent tree. Um, I think in terms of like gameplay mechanics, that's majority of the, the stuff that I'm going to talk about that's like normal. Um, now, in terms of the controls and the game itself, I felt like the game was too floaty and non-responsive. I also think that the game use, utilizes like button cue. Um, I know that there is like a fucking actual term for this and I just never can remember it. I call it button cue, but it's where if you hit the button multiple times, it cues up all of your button hits for a certain amount of times. And then like if you try to do a different button, it's going to continue using the other buttons that you've queued up. Uh, and that drives me fucking crazy in video games. Like when I hit the button, if if you're doing an action, it should immediately cancel any other button attack or button presses that I've hit. Like I just want it. Like if I hit the button attack three times, right? I hit the I hit the bu uh, attack button three times. He's swinging on his second attack and he's mid swing. If I'm hitting the heal button now because I've changed my mind and I'm like, oh shit, I need to heal now instead of attack again it should just fucking heal it shouldn't be like oh no you already hit the attack button certain amount of times you have to follow through with your actions that sucks um it does happen in a lot of games i don't know why this is a thing and it drives me fucking insane in most games that have it um to the point where like i'm a button spammer a bit i like i don't think i'll ever grow out of that i don't think i'll ever like not be a button spammer i don't trust buttons on controllers i've been i've been done bad by them you know i don't trust that my button input is going to go through on the first try especially in this game where it feels like my button inputs do not go through on the first try so i have to queue up buttons because it's forcing me to when i hit the up on the d-pad to fucking heal myself and my guy just stands there and doesn't do it like yeah i'm gonna hit that button like fucking four times um so like it's it's kind of like a, a double-edged blade thing or not even double-edged blade it's just like a fucking mechanic that's annoying it sucks it bothers me a lot and it, it drives me crazy and leaves me into just insanity um when i'm playing these kind of games um and it just makes me it makes me furious it, it pisses me off and it makes me not like the game um, so that started happening around the sludge area where I was really feeling it, Mr. Krabs. And I, I was like getting really angry because I just felt like my controls were not fluid. I felt like my, my button presses were not happening as I was hitting them. And I felt like, um, I was getting cheated by the game. I almost felt like I, there was like a latency issue. Like it was like a fucking online game and there's some asshole who's got really bad ping who's fucking up everything because he's got latency problems. As it, that's what it felt like in a single player game. I shouldn't feel like that. Uh, it fucking drove me crazy. And um, I, I felt it the most on like uh, like bosses and uh, really tough enemies. Um, it, it, it really made me feel like I was at a disadvantage in this game. Um, and then, you know, couple that with the fact that the parry system in this game is trash. And I, I will say that I think the parry system in this game is trash. I think holding down and releasing to parry is stupid. And that doesn't make any sense. Um, stop trying to be different with the parries. Just make it to fucking hit the button to block or to parry. Like that doesn't make sense to me. And so couple that with the button input delay thing and all that kind of shit and the like non-registering button in inputs. When it's all that combined, like it just makes me fucking hate this. And then that leads me into 
the game is floaty. Like your character floats around. You you hit the, the analog stick to move, and your guy kind of like moves a little bit more. He's like, oh, you you told me to move. I'm a I'm gonna take a little bit more. I'm a, I'm a slide. I'm a slide a little bit. And then you put that with environmental jump puzzles and very like precarious little ledges and stuff that you have to go to. If you've watched this last episode for like, because uh, you know this review's tacked on to the end of this episode. If you've watched this whole episode, you saw me in this last area, in the like castle area, jumping around and just falling off the fucking environment constantly. Like, I'm not a bad gamer. I'm not a bad player of video games. The fact that I fell off the the map like 30 fucking times in one area from sliding and just getting pushed off and just like weird shit happening. Like, God damn, that is annoying as fuck. Uh, so that drove me absolutely insane. And that was consistent through the entire game. Um, I think that the, uh, they, they were a little too overzealous with their, um, with their environmental jump puzzles with how tight they thought the controls for the game is. This isn't fucking, you know, Super Mario or Mario Odyssey or something where they, the, those controls are tight. Like, yeah, there's a bunch of cool jump things that you can do in that game. Um, there's a lot of environmental puzzles that are like, yes, that you can, you can get the game completed by, by being Babby, or you can be a fucking professional jumper and you can like jump and do these crazy combo jumps and stuff. This is not that. This game is really floaty and does not have really like tight controls. Um, so I just feel like it kind of was a detriment to the uh, environmental um, uh, puzzles. With that said, the environmental design in this game is fantastic. Um, the shortcuts are great. The uh, the level layouts are just fantastic. I think that the like looping back around and seeing areas that you can go to and be like, oh, how do I get to there? And then you find a way there. It's super, it reminds me of Dark Souls. It's very good. And couple that with um, fucking the, uh, the design of the game, the actual graphics. Um, I think that's great. I think the levels really are good. I think that the level layouts and designs are very good. Um, it's just, I didn't think that the uh, controls were tight enough to warrant. I, I mean, if you're going with a thematic thing, like it's kind of like the game takes place underwater. It feels like you're fucking controlling something underwater. It's like throwing a punch in a dream. It's that kind of thing, like where you just, you don't fully feel in control of your character ever, uh, which which drives me nuts. Um, so uh, now now that we've, we've kind of gone over all that shit, you know, looking at the tier list of, of things of this game, the top is still sound design and graphics. I think the world design, the graphics, oh, throw, throw level design up there with those three. So level design, graphics, and sound uh, design and soundtrack. All of those are just at the top. The the, the middle, the kind of, it's it's all right, it's serviceable, is the story. The story is nothing special, it's it's fine. Um, I think that's there. Some of the abilities and stuff, the stowaways, all that kind of stuff, that's all kind of like middle of the barrel. It's fine, It's all that stuff's fine. Controls, mechanics, uh, the floatiness of the game, the environmental puzzles, the boss fights, those are all at the bottom for me. They all suck. They, they're really bad. I didn't like really any of that stuff. There was no boss fight where I was like, oh, this is great. This is a really good boss fight. Like, I didn't once mutter that in my frustration that this is a really good boss fight. Whereas in most Souls games, I do mutter that at least once or twice where I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is a good boss fight. Good, good boss fight. Um, boss design. Yeah, they're okay. Like they're fine. Uh, I think that that the the nameless king boss or whatever the fuck he was, the the bleached porcelain throne butthole uh, crab. He was cool. I liked how his first phase was like he's kind of like stuck in place. He's using a toilet scrubber to attack you. He's sitting on a toilet. Like that's great. And then he fucking molts out of his his shell, puts on the vin the veneers, uh, the dentures, and starts a, a completely different phase of the fight. It's great. Um, the uh, the 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 lobster that you fought on the um the sushi boat was great i think he was cool uh i think he was visually cool were his mechanics interesting not really he was kind of just like a serviceable boss but he looked cool um the last two bosses the fucking infinity jellyfish where that takes over chitin um 
eh, it was a, it was a very weird fight. I, I wasn't really into it. Didn't really do anything for me. And then Firth sucks. I I think all around Firth is like a character. Firth is a story element. Firth as uh, I didn't like his voice acting. And Firth as a boss fight was awful. So let's talk about that boss fight now, shall we? Um, all the other boss fights, not really notice notable. Kind of just like, eh, whatever. They're just boss fights. They're, they're, you know, they have their mechanics. They have their big moves. There's nothing super special about them. Firth, on the other hand, had one of the worst boss fights that I've ever seen in a video game. Um, it was so, the performance was so bad that it caused me to take out my gun and just shoot him. Cause I was like, I don't, I'm not gonna even feel satisfied if I do this normally, if I do this without the gun, like I'm not gonna have any kind of like satisfaction for taking this boss down. The performance was so bad. The encoding on the OBS was shit. So that, that part of the video probably looks like absolute ass. The game itself was not running well. And I have a pretty good computer. I think my computer is pretty good. I just upgraded it. And you know, I have a 4,000, 4,000 4, 4, series, 470 Ti Super. Um, and I have uh, a really nice processor and like I have I, 32 gigabytes of RAM and all this shit. Like I have a pretty decent computer. It's not the top, top of the line, but you know, it's it's up there. It's good. Um, and so it's the game. That game, that boss fight was not optimized well. That boss fight was bad. That boss fight ran like shit. There was too much going on. They should have like taken out the clutter, done something about it. Um, and it caused the other mechanics of the game to just be highlighted in how shit they are and how unresponsive your character is. The button cues, um, the the buttons not being, you know, selected when I hit a button, that kind of shit. Like it was bad. That was a very bad boss fight. And then, you know, add into that, that I didn't like the character. I didn't like the what the story really did at the very end there. Um, and I didn't like the voice acting and all that kind of stuff. Like all of that grouped together, I think that that just sucked. <laughs> like that fight sucked ass um, to the point where I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm not spending an hour learning this fight and, you know, perfecting it so that I can beat it. I'm just going to take the gun out and not have to deal with it so I can be done with this game. Um, because at this point, like after having played, uh, however, however long the, the playlist of, of video is, um, I'm sure I could look and see how many hours I played. Um, I, I'd say I got about like halfway through the game and then started kind of dreading it. But I did tell myself like, I'm going to beat this game. I'm going to fully record it. I'm going to show the completion of the game whatever but i was not feeling doing a, a boss fight that's going to take me an hour where all the other bosses were very easy and i didn't struggle with them at all and it was mainly i feel like the performance issues on that fight was really really bad uh to the point where it was like causing me to get hit when i wouldn't get hit otherwise and that kind of stuff um so that just really fucking sucked um i think that kind of like wraps up everything um the uh once again the, the little tier list that i've created in my mind of uh you know the the best to the the worst graphics soundtrack and sound effects the um level design all at the top that shit's perfect i i think that that stuff is great that is amazing um you throw you know what throw the use of trash and how the uh, enemies and NPCs, uh, you know, work with the trash. Throw that in there. Fucking fantastic. Middle of the ground, uh, you got the stowaways, the shell system, the abilities from the bosses, uh, the all those other, like, mechanics that are just kind of like, eh, they're fine. I ended up using rollout the entire game. They're all, like, middle of the road. And then the bottom tier, the shit that really pissed me off and I just really didn't enjoy. Um... The, uh, the bosses just were not really great. They weren't super overwhelming. Like I said, the designs are like up there with graphics, I would say like designs in the world design and stuff is all really good, top tier. That's that's up at the top. But the, the way that the boss fights worked and stuff just really didn't feel good. They weren't really like unique. They were kind of just like, all right, here's a crab and here's a lobster. Here's some other aquatic animal and it's gonna do the same shit that all the other ones have done. Um, the delay, the button input, uh, cue thing, the, uh, 
the the last boss specifically all of that stuff is bottom of the barrel i really didn't like any of that shit, and it really brought my playthrough down about halfway through the game i really started feeling it mr krabs and i just really didn't enjoy it uh really sucked um <laughs> really really brought it down like i would say about halfway through the like up until halfway through the game i was kind of like uh you know at a like a it was like a seven maybe even getting close to an eight out of ten for me and then that dropped down like f like three or four points um so i usually don't like giving scores to games fully uh i know that we do a fucking series on the show or on the channel steamos where we score demos and that's kind of a whole thing where we give them a score i usually don't do scores for like games i kind of just like uh um give like a uh a, 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 did i like it or would i recommend it um so i guess i'll do that but i also kind of want to give it a score uh, i might i might switch my my uh, my ways and start giving games a score um so 